Hello and welcome to DevTest Solutions. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install DevTest Workstation in a Windows environment. Now, if you're installing on Linux or OS X, there is still benefit for you in this video. The install wizard is pretty much the same for all operating systems. But this video does highlight some of the aspects of the install that are specific to Windows. Also, if you're installing all of DevTest Server instead of just the Workstation component, there is another video available in the DocOps space specifically for that, and that video is Linux-based. And I'll also note that this video just covers the install process, so if you need help downloading the installer from CA Support, there are also detailed steps for that and another video in DocOps as well. So to get to DocOps, just open up a browser and go to docops.ca.com DTS for DevTest Solutions. And once you're there, you'll see that there is a whole section devoted to installing. And in this section, you can see the articles for installing DevTest Server and for installing Workstation. And then the article to help you download the installer is under the pre-installation section. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rolling with the install. And so I'm gonna start in the downloads directory in Windows Explorer. And you can see that I've already downloaded the installer file for Windows 64-bit, as well as the demo server zip file. And I'll mention demo server is an optional component, but it provides both the Lisa Bank and Forward Car sample applications and support files, and those are very handy for learning or for verifying your workstation install. Also note that I don't have a license file here. You don't need a license file for a workstation-only install. And I'll also point out that we don't have a CA directory here under program files. So just showing you that the product has definitely not been installed yet. So let's go ahead and launch the installer. And the first screen in the installer is the welcome page and that shows you which version of dev test you're about to install. I can just go ahead and click next. Next up is the license agreement. So you need to read through the agreement and scroll all the way to the bottom. And once you're at the bottom of the page, you can click I accept the terms of the agreement and then click Next. And now you're prompted to select the components that you want to install. I'm installing Workstation only, so I'm going to clear the server option and click Next. And there are two directories involved in the install. The first is the destination directory, also called Lisa Home, where the dev test executables get installed. And then there's also a data directory where user-specific dev test files are placed. And we'll look at both of these directories after the install completes. For now, I'm going to go ahead and accept the defaults. Next up, I have to decide whether to install the demo server. As mentioned earlier, demo server provides a convenient environment for verifying your installation, and it provides very useful sample projects for learning. I definitely want to install this, so I'm going to select that option, and then I just need to make sure the demo server zip file is correct. Then I can select whether to install a start menu folder and name it. I'm just going to accept the default name. And you can choose whether or not to create desktop icons. I'm going to leave that selected as well. And there are file associations that you can select. And again, I'm just going to accept the defaults here. And now all of my options are selected, and I'm ready to start the actual install. And to do that, I just click Install. And after a few minutes, the installation completes. And this screen provides some important information about your new install. Read through this information, and then click Next. And this is the final screen that indicates that your installation is complete, and now you can just click Finish. Notice that we now have some new icons on the desktop that were created as part of the install. And if I go to the Start menu, you can see that we have a new dev test folder in our Start menu that contains the different components that we can launch. And now let's look at the files that actually got installed. So if I go to Windows Explorer under Administrator, 
you can see that there's a new directory created for dev test. And you can see that right now there's just a hot deploy and a locks folder there. And these were the folders that were created as part of the install. But to actually populate the rest of your data directory, we need to start up workstation. And I'll do that in just a second. But let me also point out that under our program files, we also have a new CA folder that has a dev test folder underneath it with all the dev test files and components. So let's go ahead and start workstation. And to do that, I'm going to use my workstation icon on my desktop. So in this first screen, I'm prompted to specify the path to the registry that I want to connect to. And you can see that this screen defaults to DT client, but I happen to know that my server is on DT server. So let me go ahead and change that. And I do want to automatically connect to this registry, so I'm going to select that option and click OK. And now I can enter my username and my password and click login. And at this point, I'm presented with the Migrating Data with Projects panel. And this panel is showing up because this is the first time that I've started Workstation. So here I'm being asked whether I want to copy any previously existing directories and files into my new data directory. So you can either enter an existing directory here, or you can manually copy them over later. And it is worth noting that DevTest will always copy over the sample configuration templates and sample projects, including forward cars and Lisa Bank project files, from the Lisa home directory. And that happens even if you click skip. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. And you can see that it's found a couple of files that are going to be copied over. And now I can click finish. And now you can see that workstation has come up. And at the top up here, you can see that the project directory for our examples is under user administrator dev test, which is the data directory that we created. And let's go ahead and look at components real quick. I just want to verify that this workstation is connected to our dev test server components. So let's take a look here. And I'm going to go ahead and click simulators. And you can see that the simulator is showing up and the coordinator and the VSE. So Workstation has access to all of those components. And if I go back to the data directory, you can see that it's been populated. So we have an examples directory that has the example projects in it. We have a hot deploy directory that has a number of files that have been copied over. We have a lib directory, nothing in that at the moment. There's also a locks directory. And then the projects directory has been copied over and this is where all the Lisa Bank and Forward Cars projects that were created during the install of Demo Server were placed. So those are the directories that have been populated in the DevTest data directory. At this point, we successfully installed DevTest Workstation on a Windows desktop. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for viewing it. And this concludes installing DevTest Workstation on Windows. For more detailed information about this product, Click the information bubble in the top right corner to go to the CA Service Virtualization product page. From there, you can access product documentation, support, or communities, and see the available learning paths.